Hi everyone, in today's video we're gonna talk about V1, VR and V2. These are techo speeds, very important techo speeds. So at the beginning I will make sure you understand what they are and then we jump into the simulator so I can show you how these speeds are used during uh, everyday operation in a line world. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, it's Gabriele here from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737. If you're trying to become a better pilot or get your head around aviation, that's the right channel for you. So consider subscribe. First of all, leave me in a comment below if you have any questions throughout the video. Okay, for me it's extremely important you get 100% of this topic. Let's go, let's jump into this topic. Today we're going to talk about takeoff speeds. What are them? Why are they important? And I'm gonna, at the end we're going to make a practical example. I'll show you how a, an airline captain calls these speeds. Okay, DV1, DVR and DV2 are the most important speed during your takeoff. Okay, let's start with the V1. The V1, also called the decision speed, is the latest point throughout your takeoff at which you can start the maneuver to stop the aircraft in case you have a big malfunction. Okay, so let's say you are starting the takeoff, you are accelerating, then you get to the V1. Slightly before V1, you have an engine failure, for example. So you say, okay, stop the takeoff, you start the maneuver at V1, and that is the last point at which you can start the maneuver and stop the aircraft within the runway lens. Okay, if you do decide to stop the takeoff after V1, let's say you get to the V1 and then you have a problem and you decide to stop the, the takeoff after V1, you will not have enough runway to stop the plane. So, can you see the problem here? Is that because if you start the rigid the takeoff maneuver after the V1, you may end up performing a runway excursion with all the problems that are associated with that. Okay, so. But make sure you understand that the V1 is, even though it's called decision speed, it's not really a decision speed because the decision to stop the takeoff or go or continue the takeoff has to be taken slightly before because the V1 is a speed at which you should already start the maneuver, okay? It's the maximum speed at which you should already start the maneuver. So don't wait to take the decision whether to stop or continue at V1, okay? That's why when you take off, okay, as a professional pilot, you have, let's say the V1 is 130 knots, but you don't call V1 130 knots, you call it slightly before, okay? Ideally, you should call V1 few knots before, that by the time you say V1, you are actually at the V1 speed, okay? Because if you say V1 at V1 and then something happens, you might stop the aircraft and then you are too late and then you might not have enough runway. Okay, and that's all, of course, we're talking about the critical scenario. If you have a problem before V1, you just stop the aircraft and that's not a big deal because you're gonna have a lot of runway available. But we are talking on the critical scenario where you have a high speed, you, uh, you are during your takeoff roll, you are very high speed and then something happens and you reject takeoff. Okay, so I hope the V1 is clear. Let's move to the VR. The VR is the speed at which the pilot starts to apply back pressure on the controls in order to make the aircraft rotate and lift off, okay? The VR is important because at the VR the wings produce enough lift to let the aircraft flying, okay? So whenever you see an, an aircraft taking off and you see the nose wheel start to leave the ground, that is when the pilot is actually up doing the VR, okay? During the VR, the, the pilot start to apply back pressure on the controls and the nose of the aircraft start to rise, okay? Whenever you see that then the aircraft is actually airborne, but that means that even the main wheel are off of the ground, that's the lift off speed, okay? But we're gonna go into a takeoff video and we're gonna discuss these speeds as well, okay? From inside and then from outside, fantastic. Then you've got the V2. The V2 is called also takeoff safety speed. The V2 is a speed that in case you have an engine failure at or after V1 and you continue the takeoff, that speed will actually give you the best rate of climb. So let's say after slightly after V1 you have an engine failure, you decide to continue, ro you rotate the arc after the rotation and then you have to reach the V2 because it gives you the best rate of climb in case of an engine failure, okay? This V2 speed should be achieved at the end of the runway at a screen aid of 35 feet. So let's say you're taking off, you have an engine failure, you rotate the aircraft, you get to the V2 and then you should reach the V2 at the end of, by the end of the runway at 35 feet of screen aid, okay? The V1, the VR and the V2 change quite substantially depending on many conditions, okay? One of the conditions that make your speed change 
to an higher or a lower value is the aircraft weight, for example. So if you take off with a 40 ton uh, aircraft, your V1, VR, V2 will be a lot lower compared to a takeoff that uh, has a, a 75 or 80 tons aircraft, okay? So this speed changes with the weight. Another factor that uh, affect the, this takeoff speeds are the pressure, the temperature, so the pressure altitude, the density altitude. I made lots of video about those. I will make the link in the description below, okay, about pressure altitude, density altitude. Then another factor is the flaps, for example, that can uh, make your v takeoff speed change your runway slope okay because if the if the runway is downhill okay you might have a different v1 than a, and then a runway that is uphill okay there are lots of factors that actually make your takeoff speed change when i start flying we were actually calculating that this v1 vr and v2 manually so we were thinking about the QNH, the temperature, the aircraft weight, the wind, and so on, the anti-ice, the runway conditions, and so on. And we were making all the calculation by ourselves, and then we knew what were the V1, the VR, the V2 after making all the calculations. Nowadays, it's a lot easier because we've got a software in, on our tablet, okay? And then we just put the QNH, the temperature, the wind, and all the conditions that uh, affect these speeds, and then the software will provide us straight away the speed, okay? And then the aircraft has got its own database, the case of the Boeing 737, where you enter all the parameters and the aircraft as well gives you the V1, the VR, the V2 that he thinks that are correct. So what we do, we take the software speed and the FMC speed of the aircraft and we we check, we cross check them, okay? If they are pretty similar, we use the aircraft one. If they, are, if they are not similar, we use the software one because we trust more the software, okay? The decision to reject the takeoff is taken by the captain. Of course, the first officer can help the captain taking this decision, but should be taken by the captain. In fact, you will see that during the takeoff, the captain has got his hands over the throttle throughout the takeoff. And once you reach the V1, okay, and the, uh, the pilot monitor calls V1, the captain will leave the uh, the throttle and will take the controls of the aircraft is if it's flying okay why is it leaving the throttle why is is rising his end from the throttle at v1 is because once v1 is cold you cannot stop the takeoff anymore so this movement or leaving the, the throttle is made on purpose because it's actually a body language a movement you're doing that tells you that you cannot stop the aircraft anymore okay because after v1 you have to continue no matter what all right, so without further ado, let's jump into the simulator and then I'll show you first a takeoff roll, okay, with the, all the speed called by the pilot, and then we're gonna discuss a little bit. What I, what I want to make sure is that you get focused on the hand of the captain over the throttle and then they call out from the pilot. Let's jump right into it. Takeoff thrust. That's it. As you can see, the captain has got his hands over the throttle at all time. Very nice. Check. E1, rotate. And then the, the first office, in this case, the Apollo monitor, we call V1 rotate. As you saw, the rotation, when the first officer called rotate, the, arc, the captain actually started to put back pressure on the control to make the aircraft rotate. V1 rotate. Okay, so now let's go from outside and I'll show you how does it look from outside. Let's talk about this uh, takeoff from outside. Okay, as you can see, the aircraft is actually start rolling. Is accelerating for its takeoff, and when you see the nose of the aircraft is actually rotating and leaving the ground, that was that is actually when the VR is, and when you will see that the main landing gear actually leave the ground, that's the lift off speeds. So the V1 maybe is around here, for example. Look rotation, and then look at the main landing gear. It's actually leaving the ground, and this is. Now the V2 is pretty much here, okay? As you can see, you can actually figure it out when the VR is, because when the nose of the aircraft start to leave the ground, that's actually when the pilot apply the back pressure and rotate the plane, okay? So I hope you liked the video and you took something out of it. Give it a like to the video if you like it and consider subscribing to the channel so you will not miss the next pilot training content. Also go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will help you out. I'll see you on the next one.